Li Chang's speech completely censored, CCP's rescue efforts resemble civil war. China's economic downturn hits nursing homes, rural areas witness retirement wave. Plummeting prices of agricultural products across China, watermelons and tomatoes abandoned in the wild. Intensifying competition in China's auto market, dealers suffer heavy losses and flee. Chinese people smuggle into Italy in luxury cars. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Li Chang's speech completely censored, CCP's rescue efforts resemble civil war. The CCP's attempts to escape economic collapse are likened to drinking poison to quench thirst. Recent economic remarks by Premier Li Chang have been censored by CCP state media. According to foreign media reports, on June 25 at the Summer Davos Forum in Dalian, Li Chang stated that after years of pandemic impact, China's economy is like recovering from a serious illness and cannot be given strong medicine and currently needs to consolidate the foundation and cultivate the vitality, among other things. Strangely, Chinese domestic reports have deleted these remarks, only reporting his boasting of China's good development momentum and his criticism of Western society. Among mainland media, only Jolonghui followed foreign media in its report headline, stating that Li Chang said, China's economy currently cannot be given strong medicine and needs to consolidate the foundation and cultivate the vitality, but this article was quickly taken down. Some commentators say that when Li Chang says the economy cannot be given strong medicine and needs to consolidate the foundation and cultivate the vitality, it implies that the economy has entered a long-term recession, beyond salvation, and needs time. The question is, does the CCP have time? Can it hold on? To use an analogy, if an old house collapses, it may not be a big problem, but now it's the second tallest building in the world, its collapse would cause widespread devastation. Perhaps it is precisely because Li Chang's remarks reveal the despairing state of the Chinese economy that domestic media dare not report them. In the comments section, someone asked about Li Chang's statement of not administering strong medicine, is the 30-year tax investigation considered strong medicine? The 30-year tax investigation is a new measure by the CCP to rake in funds as it faces the collapse of land-based finances. Even within Chinese internet circles, people are complaining that the tax investigation is causing small and micro-enterprises to face back tax waves, leaving business owners lamenting their lack of survival space. One business owner posted that his factory, with over 100 people, was found to have invoice issues from 2012 to 2014 during the tax investigation, resulting in a tax repayment of 890,000 renminbi, approximately $122,000, plus a fine of 150,000 renminbi, about $21,000 and he was sentenced to four years of community correction, prohibited from leaving his residence for four years. The factory, impacted, has reduced its workers to just over 20. The factory's business comes from Shenzhen and Dunguan, but now the owner cannot leave the community and cannot secure business, forcing closure. A Chinese netizen said that this center's approach to the Chinese economy is like draining the pond to catch fish, killing the chicken to get the egg, and drinking poison to quench thirst. Independent scholar Wu Zhuolai said that the police tax operations represent a wartime plundering of private enterprises by a police state. Normal people couldn't come up with a term like police tax operations, which essentially means deploying police forces to seize wealth to protect the party and maintain power, as if a civil war is ongoing. China's economic downturn hits nursing homes, rural areas witness retirement wave. In recent years, with the advancement of urbanization in China, more rural migrant workers have left their hometowns to work in cities. However, the prolonged economic downturn following the pandemic has led to many of these workers losing their jobs and returning to their rural homes. According to a report by the National Bureau of Statistics, the proportion of migrant workers in the construction industry decreased from 19% in 2021 to 15.4% in 2023, with nearly 10 million workers leaving the industry. Unemployed and without an income, these workers cannot afford to pay for their elderly relatives' care in nursing homes. 
On June 25, the Economic Observer reported that 50-something Chen Jianliang had to take his mother out of a nursing home due to financial difficulties. His mother, who had a stroke in 2021, required constant care. Chen and his sister had been sharing the cost of 2,600 renminbi, about $360, per month, but Chen's inability to find work forced him to bring his mother home. Zhang Tong, who runs nearly 10 rural nursing homes in a top GDP city, noted that the discharge rate due to economic reasons rose from 15% in previous years to 25% in the first half of this year. Rural nursing homes typically charge between 2,000 and 5,000 renminbi per month, from $275 to $690, with fees usually shared by the children of the elderly residents. An expert from a nursing industry association confirmed that many rural elderly are leaving nursing homes for economic reasons. Some families are moving their elderly relatives to cheaper nursing homes. Song Tao, who manages rural nursing homes in three southern provinces, said many families reported reduced incomes and had to transfer their elderly to homes charging a few hundred yuan per month. This trend is also seen in township areas of major cities, where the number of non-local elderly residents is decreasing. Many rural nursing homes are struggling to break even as more elderly residents leave. Zhang Tong mentioned that even the competitive prices of nursing homes are too high for rural incomes. The Rural Green Book shows that the average pension for farmers is 204 renminbi and 70 cents, about $28, per month, far below the cost of nursing home care. Song Town noted that due to financial constraints and traditional attitudes, rural elderly generally avoid nursing homes unless absolutely necessary. Many continue working in the fields until they can no longer move, resulting in high vacancy rates. Chen Jianliang remarked that both his generation and his parents' generation cannot afford nursing homes. With most being only children, the burden of elder care is immense when both sets of parents need care. According to the 7th National Census by the CCP, the elderly population aged 60 and above and 65 and above in rural China is 121 million and 90.33 million, respectively. China's rural areas have entered a moderately aging society ahead of time. Plummeting prices of agricultural products across China, watermelons and tomatoes abandoned in the wild. China's economic downturn has led to weak domestic demand. The prices of fruits, vegetables, and meat have significantly dropped in many regions, with some products even failing to sell. On June 24, a video emerged showing a wholesale market for watermelons in Shandong, filled with watermelon-laden trucks as far as the eye could see. However, very few trucks were leaving after making successful sales. The woman filming the video sighed, noting that Shandong's watermelons are oversupplied. In previous years, the lowest price was 1 to 1.2 yuan per kg, about 14 to 17 cents per kg, but this year, even the very low price still can't attract buyers. Previous videos have shown farmers unable to sell their watermelons, resorting to throwing them away. According to mainland media reports, due to downgraded consumer spending, the watermelon market in Xichang, Hunan, is also suffering from severe stagnation and plummeting prices. Farmers endure high temperatures and mosquito bites, guarding their tractors day and night, taking several nights to sell one load of watermelons. In addition to watermelons, fruits like durians and cherries have also faced cold reception and price drops upon hitting the market. Many growers on mainland short video platforms complain about the low prices of agricultural products, saying they cannot cover harvesting costs. Some have even stopped harvesting, letting the fruits rot in the fields. One video shows a farmer dumping a truckload of freshly harvested tomatoes by the roadside. Nearby, there is another pile of abandoned tomatoes, indicating he is not alone in his struggle. Another video shows a distressed farmer crying out, having sold cabbages grown on 8 mu of land for only 0.2 yuan, about 3 cents, per kg, and pigs for just 8 yuan, about 1.1 dollars, per kg. He exclaims, heavens, how are we supposed to survive? 
Furthermore, mainland media reports that beef prices in many regions have recently dropped to near pork prices, with fresh beef rump in Beijing selling for only 62 yuan, about $8.50, per kg. The China Meat Association estimates that about 70% of farmers raising mid to low end beef cattle are currently experiencing losses. Intensifying competition in China's auto market, dealers suffer heavy losses and flee. According to a survey report by the China Automobile Dealers Association, only 27.3% of dealers achieved their annual sales targets in 2023, while the proportion of dealers suffering losses reached as high as 43.5%. Among leading companies, Zhongshan Group saw a profit decline of 24.7%. Other companies, such as Yongda Auto, Meidong Auto, Xian Feng Tai Group, and Better Life Holdings, experienced profit drops of over 60%. The China Automobile Dealers Association's data also revealed that in May, the inventory warning index for Chinese auto dealers rose to 58.2%, above the warning line, indicating increased inventory pressure. Industry insiders told mainland media that some dealers have inventory depths of up to three months, bearing financial pressure and risks on behalf of car manufacturers. The report pointed out that since the beginning of this year, the competition within China's auto industry has intensified. Auto dealers, especially those mainly selling traditional fuel vehicles, are facing significantly reduced profitability, strained relationships with manufacturers, and are on the brink of collapse. Market anxiety continues to spread. Currently, new energy vehicle brands generally adopt direct sales models, squeezing the living space for dealers. Additionally, price wars further compress dealer profit margins, increasing their operating pressure and risks. Many 4S stores are selling cars at a loss due to manufacturers aggressively lowering prices and pushing inventory. A car dealer in Chengdu, Sichuan complained that the market is extremely tough right now. Even luxury brands are struggling, with some starting 50% off promotions. Dealers are not making money from car sales and are even experiencing floating losses. However, exiting the network would result in even greater losses, making it a no-win situation. Severe dealer losses and the difficulty of exiting the network have led to frequent cases of dealers fleeing. An investor in car dealerships explained that each year the dealership teeters between making and losing money, with losses amounting to 1 or 2 million yuan, about $280,000. However, exiting the network could result in losses of up to tens of millions of yuan. Moreover, each dealership often employs dozens to hundreds of staff. If they exit the network, the compensation for employees could reach tens of thousands of yuan per person. The accumulation of these huge sums forces dealers to flee, causing direct harm to consumers. On May 9, several car owners complained on social media that a 4S store in Hebei, Hunan suddenly closed, leaving them unable to get their deposits back, affecting 1,000 car owners. The current market slump has impacted even luxury brands. Porsche has struggled to sell cars and had to offer promotions at a loss, leading some dealers to protest by stopping vehicle orders and demanding subsidies and management changes. Similarly, Mercedes-Benz all-electric EQ series has caused severe dealer losses, with the EQE now selling at 50% to 60% discounts due to poor sales in China. This has deepened conflicts between dealers and manufacturers. Recently, BMW and Audi models in China have also seen significant price drops, with prices plunging by more than 50%. Chinese people smuggle into Italy in luxury cars. On June 26, Italian police announced they had uncovered a smuggling ring that used luxury cars to smuggle Chinese people into Italy. In the statement, Italian police said these Chinese smugglers were disguised as wealthy Asians. They were well-dressed, carried minimal luggage, and rode in luxury cars driven by long-term Chinese residents of Italy who spoke Italian. In April of this year, an Italian Chinese driver in a luxury car was stopped during a routine check at the Italy-Slovenia border. He was carrying four undocumented Chinese individuals. Investigators suspected that this smuggling operation might be organized. 
The Italian police statement revealed that a small but continuous flow of illegal Chinese immigrants arrived at Europe's outer borders via countries where they can enter without a visa, mainly Serbia. From there, they traveled by car through Bosnia, Croatia, and Slovenia to reach the Italian border. The statement said that these smuggled Chinese individuals were taken to a safe house near Venice, where they stayed for one or two days before being transported to other EU countries such as Italy, France, or Spain. The smuggling organization confiscated their passports at the safe house. From that point on, they suffered severe exploitation until they paid off their travel debts. Italian police stated that these Chinese individuals were enslaved by the smuggling organization, with no freedom or medical assistance. They had nothing but a bed and a place to work indefinitely. Police arrested nine members of the smuggling organization and identified 77 illegal Chinese immigrants, many of whom were women and some minors aged 15 to 18. In recent years, as China's economy has declined and the Chinese authorities have increased their violent control, more Chinese people have risked smuggling abroad in search of freedom and survival. The number of Chinese smuggling into the United States through running the line has also increased. According to UNHCR data, the U.S. accepted 63,000 Chinese immigrants in 2023. Additionally, some countries in Europe and Southeast Asia have become popular destinations for Chinese emigrants. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. If you find the information helpful, please share this video with a friend to watch together. This will be a great source of motivation for our team to produce more and more quality and reliable videos. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you for tuning in.